Hello guys, in this video uh, what we'll do is we'll basically uh, do a small animation on scroll. So when we scroll we can see that this div is uh, coming in from right and left uh, and as we sc scroll down it's coming in. When we scroll up it's going back and this is a simple uh, but useful project that we'll be uh, doing. So if you're interested uh, do stick around and we are using uh, the Brad Travis's uh, code 50 projects in 50 days so let's get into the video so uh, we are using the same template that we were previously using so uh, the link uh, to making this uh, template is in the cards you can check that out so uh, let's begin begin by uh, renaming the title of the page and we uh, give the title as scroll animation and we will add an h1 tag and in the h1 tag we will give us um, animation by scrolling and the html is pretty simple uh, we just want want the box class and uh, when when uh, show show class is dynamically added to the uh, to the div we want the animation to show and we want the content to assemble at the center so that's how the animation is going to be um, so this this is just an example and uh, in real case we can use a section of div or something a section of a page or uh, or something else for the animation so we are not focusing on the content here we are just giving uh, sample uh, sa sample content so we'll give a we'll create a div with a class of box and in here we'll create an h2 tag with the name content we'll save that and we'll basically copy paste this thing multiple times so that it fills the page okay so that's all we need uh, for style. Uh, I mean for HTML. So let's get into into the styling part. So in here, uh, we want the scroll on on the y-axis. So we we'll just do scroll x hidden, and now you can see that there is scroll on on y-axis. Now uh, we'll just do some basic styling for uh, the box as well as the body. So we'll add a background color at first and we'll give it a value of tan and save that. Now uh, we'll take the box box class and what we'll do is uh, we'll add a background color here as well and we'll give it a color of steel blue. Uh, we'll give it a margin as well so that it's separated and we'll give it a 10 pixel margin now uh, we want it to have a specific height and width so we'll uh, give it a height of 200 pixel and we'll give it a width of 200 pixel uh, we want uh, a border radius we don't want it to be so sharp so we'll give the border radius of uh, 10 pixel uh, we want the content to be uh, centered in the middle so the easiest way to do that is uh, using flex so we display flex and we'll do align item center and justify content center save that now the the content is in center so now what we want is uh, we'll make this it's um, this white we'll take the h2 inside the box and we'll do the color as white and we'll increase the font size as well Um, that's better 
so what we want is we want the we want this uh, this box to come in from right and left based on uh, when when it's scrolling so we want we'll give it a so the so initially it will be outside the window so we'll uh, move it outside the window so do that we'll do a transform and we'll do translate to x and we'll move it to minus 400 percentage so this will move the whole thing outside uh, outside the window and when it's coming we want it to come from uh, come in with an animation so we'll give it a transition value and we'll give transition to the transform property and we want the transform I mean, we want the transition to take place over 0.5 seconds and we want the animation to ease so now it's doing a, an animation or we'll just put it as 400 so it's now it, it's on this side earlier it was on the other side so we want uh, it to alternate so what we'll do is uh, we'll get the alternate alternate boxes so the, the way you can do that is we'll do box and we'll use a pseudo selector a uh, nth of type and we'll pass the even even boxes so by doing it we can get the even boxes and we'll uh, do the trans tra uh, we'll do the transform on x in negative 400 percentage in this way the even boxes are on this side and the odd boxes are on the other side so this way when the animation actually when the class show actually comes uh, it, it will come from the alternate direction so um, when the show class is added to box so when the show class is added to the box we want the uh, translate x to, x to be 0 so that it's uh, right back in the middle so now there is no uh, show class so let's just add one manually to see how it looks so when, when the show class is there it will come in the middle since it, it, it is manually there uh, we do not see the animation uh, but when we dynamically create uh, dynamically add this show class the animation will be there um, that's all there is uh, in the CSS part. Now let's uh, write some uh, JavaScript for the animation. First, let's get all the boxes. So to do that, const uh, boxes, we'll do uh, document dot query selector all of class box and this way we can get a list of all the all the uh, div with a class of box and what we'll do is what we want is when the scroll happens we want something to do we want something to happen so when the scroll is happening on the window so to do that we will do an add event listener on window and the event here is scroll and when that happened we want a function scrolling to be called so we have not written scrolling function so we will do that so function scrolling and every time the scroll hat uh, the scroll happens this function will be called then this function is called what is supposed to happen so uh, we have we have to check uh, one thing which is uh, if the position of the content or the box uh, is above a trigger point if it is above a trigger point uh, then it should add a class of uh, show and if it is not in uh, within the uh, within the trigger point we want to remove the class of the, uh, show so the, the way we can do that uh, is first to get the trigger point so we'll get the trigger so we'll give it a value of trigger button and the way we can do that is uh, we'll get the height of the viewport so so to do that we'll do window dot inner height 
and this will give the height of the viewport and this will change based on uh, the size and if I resize this position here uh, position of this window uh, the height will change so at the same time we don't want to give it a static value like uh, 100 pixel or something saying that uh, we'll just if it, it is 100 pixel from the bottom then we we'll want to trigger it so uh, that is not possible because uh, when the screen size changes that will become an issue so what we can do is we can say that if uh, if the box which is the content uh, reaches 80 percentage of the viewport height or is around here suppose uh, if this is 100 80 will be somewhat here right so if uh, if the box reaches somewhat 80 percentage we want to add that class so uh, we'll get the trigger uh, we'll set the trigger as 80 percentage of the viewport height so do the to, so to do that we'll take the inner height and we'll multiply it by 4 by 5 basically that's the 80 percentage now we want to get the position of each boxes or in each individual box so we'll loop through the list we have so we'll do boxes dot for each and for each box we want to call this function and we want to get the position of this each box so the way we can do that is uh, we'll give it a value of uh, box stop and this is basically uh, box dot get bounding client right dot top so uh, let me just search this uh, in google and show you what this means So basically this function what it does is uh, it gets the element and since we have given here top what we'll get is the viewport position from the top so that this will give a position uh, from the top so uh, so what we'll do uh, so from this what we'll get is we can check based on this position uh, if the trigger bottom if trigger bottom is greater than uh, box top so in this case what we want to do is we want to uh, add the class of show so what we'll do is we'll do box dot class list dot add and we'll add the class of show and if that's not if this condition is not um, happening we want to remove the class of show So we'll save that and see what happens. So now we can see when it's scrolling, uh, the div div is coming into place, and when we are scrolling back, it's when it's reaching eighty percentage, it's going back to its position, or the class show is being removed. So that's how this animation works. So there are better ways or better libraries that can do uh, much more uh, dynamic scroll um, in scroll animation like like animate on scroll uh, it's, a, it's an awesome library we can use something like that but for simple stuff like this uh, we can we can simply write uh, basic javascript and we can get the uh, get the things done so uh, hope you uh, learned something from this video uh, if you did uh, do let me know and thank you for watching and see you guys in the next one.